Hello and welcome to this rich guide to treating helminthic side effects, helminthic therapy flares, and the NA itch. If side effects become a bit much despite safe dosing, there are a few tricks you can try. 5 to 10 milligrams of prednisone has been enough to alleviate symptoms for most people, but you don't want to take it for more than a week before tapering off since prednisone itself can have some pretty nasty side effects if taken too long. Self-treaters who are already taking prednisone regularly might not notice any side effects at all. Depending on where you live, it can be difficult to find a doctor willing to prescribe prednisone for you, but there are some online pharmacies where you can get it without a prescription. Since a lot of the helminth-related side effects are H1 and H2 receptors flaring, taking antihistamines should also help. But if you're taking NA and TTO, definitely check the Human Helminth Care Manual first to make sure the antihistamines you're taking are helminth safe. That's actually something you should do for any foods you'll be eating or medications you'll be taking while hosting NA or TTO. It's really quick and easy. You just go to the page and use your browser search tool to jump to whatever you're looking for. If you can't find it, chances are it's safe. HDC and TSO aren't as sensitive, so you usually don't have to worry about them, but their providers do have a short watch list on their own websites. Low dose naltrexone or LDN is another good one for offsetting side effects and can also be a great complement to helminthic therapy. If the one isn't enough on its own, you might consider using both helmets and LDN together in the long term. You can also use other helmets. There's another theory in the community that starting with HDC or TSO could help reduce the initial side effects caused by NA and TTO. Since HDC and TSO are killed off every two weeks, you have more control and can space out your dosing a bit more if you feel you need a break. If you take too many, it won't be long before things ease up on their own. NA and TTO are more of a long-term commitment. If you realize your helminth-related side effects or helminth-induced flare of usual symptoms is too much and none of the previously mentioned suggestions or anything else that can be found on the wiki are able to alleviate them, you can try taking anti-helminthics to reduce your colony to a more manageable size or even eliminate it completely and start over from scratch. When it comes to NA inoculation sites, the classic trick among NA users is zapping the entry marks with a hairdryer. Let the hot air blow until it starts to feel uncomfortable, and then it should stop itching for a few hours. Just be careful not to burn yourself. You can also try oral or topical antihistamines, but again, don't forget to check the Human Helminth Care Manual. Other topical creams like hydrocortisone and calamine lotion work too. Others have used Epsom salt, sea salt rinses, honey, toothpaste, or even a selection of essential oils. Some have used a tight band to apply pressure or even get relief from slapping their itch into submission. Ice packs have been said to work too. While not experiencing an itch or rash doesn't mean your inoculation was unsuccessful, if you do see a rash or feel an itch, you can be sure your NA are alive and kicking. And for those of you who do share in this part of the experience, it will probably become more intense with each successive dose up until the fifth inoculation. If around that time the rash becomes really irritated and oozes, there are a few other techniques that can be tried. You can use a pumice stone to file away the blisters, which can help reduce swelling. Once you scratch the scabs off, you'll see tiny little craters that may release a bit of clear fluid for a few days. But we've never had any reports of inoculation sites getting infected, which makes sense since they've just given your immune system quite the wake-up call. There might appear to be some very light scarring, but this usually disappears after a few months, if not much sooner. This information can be found on the wiki pages, hookworm dosing and response, self-treating with HDC, self-treating with TSO, self-treating with TTO, hookworm side effects, and the hookworm inoculation rash. And I'll see you guys in the next installment.